Hey guys, welcome back to Primer Podcast. We're in a brand new series called Bless Your Heart here with Jarm Turner. And so, um, Bless Your Heart, that's a pretty interesting It's very series. Southern. It is, yeah. Bless Your Heart, Jessica. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually you, you say to somebody when they've either said something kind of stupid. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. bless your heart. <laughs> Or that, you know, or just to you know make somebody sound you know kind of ignorant, right? So I don't know if it's is it a it sounds like an insult a little bit. Maybe it could be. Yeah, who could take but it that way? People, I've I've heard others use it in a in an endearing way. Endearing way. Yeah. Like in what way? Like, like oh my gosh, bless your heart. Like, and they're not oh, truly. That's right. They're not like they're. It's usually a little older generation and and like you're sharing something that's painful and they're yeah. like oh bless your heart yeah. you know well that well, then that just tells a lot about how i've how, how people have used it for me like jar just bless oh my gosh just bless your heart yeah yeah no that's good but uh yeah this is a brand new series excited yeah. it's actually based on this book um called bless and it's an acronym it's five everyday ways to love your neighbor mm-hmm. and change the world and uh, it's about by John and, and Dave Ferguson, um, and it's an acronym that uh, stands for B is begin in prayer, mm-hmm. uh, L is listen in with care. I think that is, um, and then it's uh, E is eat together. Uh, the first S is serve in love, mm-hmm. and then the last S is share your story. Yeah, you know, so it's a uh, it's it's actually practices. It's not like an evangelism strategy, which. Uh, as soon as we get into the series, people are going to think, okay, this is, we're going to talk about evangelism. Right. Which is a little intimidating. Yes. Yeah. yeah that word itself, you know, oh, like, yeah. people are like, ah, I'm going to check out. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, it carries a little bit of baggage. Like why, why is that? I mean, what, what are some of your experiences with evangelism that Whew, well, you know, carries a baggage? I, um, I don't know that I experienced a whole lot um, before I was a Christ follower. So I don't know how I would have um, felt this way towards this one particular person if I would, had not known Jesus or if I'd, even if I knew Jesus, but I wasn't following him. But I had one particular experience at Walmart mm-hmm. in the parking lot and um, I was putting away my groceries and, um, and all of a sudden this young man came up to me and said, ma'am, do you have a minute? And I said, Sure. And he said, do you know Jesus? And I said, yeah, actually I do. <laughs> he said, oh, well, good. And he just turned around. Mm-hmm. And I thought, you know, I understand his heart. Like I, I understand his want mm-hmm. for others to know Jesus. I just don't think that's probably the best way to do it. Yeah. You, could, you <laughs> get run over in the parking lot. Walmart. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what a conversation. Yeah. yeah. But then in other times, like, um, as I was starting my relationship with Christ and how others came into my life with um, probably not even the, their first sentence was about, about Jesus. It was more of, they showed me Jesus through their actions, the way they yeah. listened, um, the, the way they wanted to get to know me mm-hmm. um, was probably my first interaction with um, knowing those that knew Jesus already. Yeah. Yeah, and the Sunday, you know, I'm, I'm be kind of unpacking and sharing some of the evangelism methods, practices, strategies that I've engaged in over the you know three decades of ministry that I've been a part of. But and uh, you know, a lot of them were exciting, uh, scary, and and uh, I don't know how effective. But one thing I like about this is uh, they are. It's not. It's not that. It's not mm-hmm. a method. It's not a program. Right. It really does lean into the practices of Jesus that the authors have uncovered uh, through the scriptures um, that. You know that, that he that he used you know every day mm-hmm. and since our mission is all about you know we want to make Jesus famous by becoming more like him, then we just want to kind of take a deep dive and look into seeing okay now what did Jesus do then like yeah. how did how did he practice sharing the good news of the gospel and blessing people you mm-hmm. know how was he a blessing to people and uh, and t- this week is uh, is begin with prayer mm-hmm. and actually the passage I'm using is is um, from Paul. Paul is uh, is teaching uh, young Timothy is a protege of, of Paul's and. Um, you know, just about how to plant a church and how to uh, how to share the gospel and how to reach a city. You know, um, and this is what he says. He says uh, to Timothy, he "Goes, I urge you first of all to pray for all people, ask God to help them, intercede on their behalf, and give thanks for them." Um, 
what do you notice about that uh, that that first verse that um, that you know, think stand out to you? Um, probably one the urgency. I'm mm-hmm. sorry, the thought of I urge you, and but first of all, it's the thought of this is the first thing you need to do is is in prayer in intercession. Um, thanksgiving be made for all people. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I just pretty much just said the whole prayer again, or the whole verse. That's again. good. But, but yeah, first of all, I think it's first perfect. of all. Yeah. Cause there's, I mean, when I think about all, it's like, I think about all the different ways that Timothy may be thinking that we could, you know, that, that we can reach people with, you know, he may be thinking about like, Hey, we could do this crusade or right. I can go hit the streets or I can do this or that, or, you know, we can teach a discipleship class or, you know, whatever he goes, like there's all things, all kinds of things that we can do to make sure that we are able to communicate the truth to people. But Paul is saying, Hey, to stop right here. First of all, this is what you need to do. Yeah. You know? And um, so he says, ask God to help them intercede on their behalf. I'll talk about um, this Sunday on how intercede really means to stand in the gap for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, And then also give thanks for them. You know, so I I think those are very, I think Paul put those in there intentionally. Um, You know, like, you know, why do you feel, why do you think that Paul would encourage us to really put our focus on an, an individual, you know, rather than just kind of jumping out there and just, you know, you know, trying to do evangelism? Right. Um, I think even though evangelism, it feels like you're going to hit more people. Um, but I think that, like I, I mentioned before, is that relational part yeah. is actually where, you're, you may only be talking to Jesus or talking to one person about Jesus. And you feel like that. I, I wonder if people are thinking, okay, I need to talk to as many people as I can. Yeah. And so they go out and they go into Walmart <laughs> and cause there's a lot of people there, yeah. but they're not thinking how, how much pouring into one person can truly mean. Yeah. And so I think that's what Paul's saying is yeah. that, you know, truly, praying over someone, mm-hmm. you know, and, and, and I know that's, you know, that's what this, that's what Jesus did. Yeah. You know, like I, I look at, um, what's that? Luke where Jesus goes and spends all night in prayer before he, um, he asked the 12 disciples. And so like to be, to, to follow him. Mm-hmm. And so like, I think of that, that is that, you know, we're following what, what Jesus has done. And, um, and so that, and that's what Paul is telling Timothy right here is to say, you know, this, this is what Jesus did while he was here on earth. So that is what we should do. Yeah. How many times did Jesus go and pray before he did anything? All the time. Yeah. He was always disappearing. Disciples were like, where did he go? Right. Well, he's always out in the mountain. He's up the mountain again, or he's, you know, he's out in the woods or wherever he, he, I mean, he was just always disappearing. Right. To be with the father. And, uh, and I think that's, when you look at that, that's where he was getting, number one, he was receiving, I'm I'm sure, empowerment through the spirit of God, but then also, you know, kind of getting close to the father's heart, Mm -hmm. you know, and I, I think a lot of times, you know, in event, especially when it comes to, you know, evangelism, we want to make sure that we're doing it from uh, the father, the, the the heart of the heavenly father, you know, mm-hmm. and not from, you know, just hey, we're just trying to, you know, we want we want to build the church or we want to complete the mission or we want to, you know, we we want to take our marching orders from the heart of God, and that mm-hmm. that heart is exudes compassion, uh, patience, um, you know, listening, serving. Um, it's just there's there's a there's a lot more to it. So I, I I appreciate that Jesus was a first of all prayer, yeah, you know, uh, savior. Um, I think that's one one of the things that we're going to focus on, you know, this this weekend on how to do that. Right. You know what what does that look like? You know what what keeps us from being first of all prayer people? You know what are some of the things that inhibit us from mm-hmm. that? And uh, I think that's probably a good thing to talk about in the groups. Yeah. Um, it's just kind of let's just be honest about like what are, what are some of the things that keep you from prayer? Yeah, I think a lot of times just rushing and um, thinking I can take you know, control of it and Mm -hmm. taking care of things. And, um, and well, a lot of times, especially if when we're praying for someone else Mm -hmm. and maybe it's someone we don't know very well, it's hard to know, um, what to pray for. Yeah. And, um, I was listening to, to something earlier and it was saying that, 
um, a lot of times when we go to prayer, we think the um, our prayer time should be always talking mm. to God, yeah, and not listening. And how often, and I've experienced this, and and where when we just listen, it can be uncomfortable, yeah, because sometimes it's silence, like we don't hear anything from God, we don't have to have any feeling of um, certainty of what God's asking us to do. Mm. Um, but yet there are times where I felt this, you know, I've just listened and all of a sudden somebody's name pops in my head. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I haven't talked to them in five years. Mm. Like, why, why is this name popping in my head? And, um, but yet if I just talked to God and I said, you know, this is, this is what I'm praying for and not listen. Mm. I think that, um, that a lot of times is my, I know my struggle is the yeah. the time that I don't I don't normally listen for God's guidance. Yeah, yeah, same, same. Yeah, and I think you know that's that's really why it's this a practice. You have to really, I mean, you have to work at it. Right, I mean, it, it really is. So, so that's just one. Um, but so obviously, you know, this week we're gonna we're gonna you know really start this practice. Yeah, so begin in prayer, and then Pete will pick things up next week with listen with mm-hmm. care. You know, and then we'll go to the uh, the rest of the acronym. But uh, I feel like people are really going to enjoy this uh, this series, and it's I think it's going to uh, kind of give folks a, a breather of like, okay, right? Okay. This they is don't not have the to evangelism. go to Walmart. They don't have to go. <laughs> we are not starting a Walmart parking lot ministry, <laughs> right? So I'm sure we're not doing that. So just to let you know, um, you know. But yeah, yeah. Thanks for doing this. Appreciate it. Yeah. Well, thanks, guys. We hope that you. Um, just enjoy your time talking about this in your groups or your individual study time and we'll see you next week.